Okay, so we're going to colorize an old photo. And before you start colorizing it, I want you to make sure that you remember to repair any areas that you feel confident in repairing. Um, some things might be a little bit too much, but just kind of use your your discretion. Uh, for one thing, anything that has like a historical part to the image, like the Sutton's Bay, Michigan, 1917, you can leave that alone. Don't feel like you need to remove that. But these like black spots all around here are good to remove. And remember that we use our healing tool and our cloning tool to do that. The cloning tool copies and pastes, essentially, from a selection area. Um, so I could, the convenient thing about this image is that the window that's goofed up over here, there's another window that's identical to it. Now, the picture you select, you might not have as much luck, but for this one, it kind of works out. So what you can do is command click for your selection area, and I'm on my cloning tool, and then I can do command click, and then here I'm just copying and pasting that window in. So now if we go to view, uh, zoom, fit image and window, I can see that that window, which previously looked like this, now looks like this, okay? And I can use my healing tool up in the sky um, on these little awnings areas, and I can repair this a little bit better, but you get the, you get the gist. So go ahead and spend a little bit of time trying to heal and clone to repair the image and just do it honestly, whatever feels appropriate. Um, but for the colorizing part, I'm gonna actually use a, my own personal historical image, which was uh, that of my mother when she's 14 years old. And she was one of 11 children and had five brothers and five sisters, and she won a baking contest at the age of 14. So the magazine that hosted the contest paid for a professional photographer to come out and take her photograph, which was a very special thing. If you're one of 11 children in a farming family, you don't get a professional photo taken very often. So um, I would like to add some color to this photo because uh, she's in the cherry orchard. And there's cherries here, but it's black and white. So even though it's a beautiful image, I think it could be pretty fun to add some color. So here's the layer of my mom. I am going to add a new layer. So I'm going to click on that button. And right here, it says fill with. And you want to make sure that says transparency. You don't want it to have any of these other colors. So make sure it's a transparent layer. Hit OK. If for some reason your layer appeared underneath, you want to make sure it's on top because you're going to be painting on top. So this is a new tool that we haven't used yet, and that's the paintbrush tool. So go ahead and click on that. Um, and then how you select your color for your paintbrush tool is right here. You have a foreground and a background color for the paintbrush tool. Um, your, it'll paint whatever is the foreground color. If you're toggling between two different colors, you can have these both colors, and then you can hit this uh, little arrow, and it switches it back and forth. Um, or you can just go and change the color. So I'm going to go ahead, and I had selected this red here for my the cherries, a nice bright red. And I'm going to go ahead and start to color on top of my cherries. Now, obviously, this looks really bad right now. So what we need to do is adjust the opacity. So I'll go ahead and um, right here on my layers palette, there's this area that says opacity, and that's basically just how see-through your image is. So if it's at 100, it's 100% opacity. You cannot see through it. But if we adjust it to 20, it'll be see-through. Now, this looks bad, uh, and that is because when I created my layer, I forgot to adjust the mode. So you want the mode, this one for whatever reason, it's defaulting to dissolve, but that causes it to look pixelated. So go ahead and select um, normal. There we go, okay. So now I'm starting to get these cherries to pop through. And you can pick an opacity that feels appropriate. So this is at 20% opacity. If I adjust it down to, let's see, one is too small. Seven. You can see kind of where it starts to feel authentic. So maybe I might bump mine up a little bit, but hey, 13 looks pretty good. Okay, so that's my, that's kind of the basic gist of it. You create a transparent layer 
um, and then use your paintbrush to paint directly on top of the picture. Now there are other shortcuts and different things that you can do that get more a little bit complicated, but this is kind of where we're gonna land with this image or with this project. So I'm gonna play around with the skin tone here. And because it's a transparent layer, you might wanna pick like a more saturated image, uh, sorry, more saturated color than you normally would. Um, so like for the skin tone, let's see. Looking really good. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this opacity to 13 is what the cherries were at. Oh yeah, and then this mode is dissolved. That looks bad, so hit normal. Come on, normal, there we go. So now that's looking nice and smooth, less freaky. And those of you that like doing makeup, this could be really fun um, because you could do like some little blush, pops of blush or whatever in there too, by doing a really subtle red on top or pink. And then to remove, you can just use your uh, eraser tool and that should remove colors. So if you accidentally get bumped and you go off into this area, um, we should be able to use our eraser tool, which is right next to your paintbrush tool, convenient, and go ahead and erase it. Okay, that's the gist of it. Um, try and be in, true to the historical period of the time. So like my mother, this was 1964, uh, and she was a 14 year old farmer in, in an old Mission Peninsula area. So she probably was not wearing like a lime green dress or like bright hot pink or something. So try to be true to the time, um, authentic to the time period.